background is basically in project management, contract management and business development. I have around 17 years in, in contract uh, management and engineering. Um, uh, I have uh, three degrees and master degrees and, and a PhD in, in mechanical engineering uh, in the U.S. I spent some time in the U.S. I worked for defense and security companies for, for some time before, before I joined SAR. And uh, when I joined SAR, they, uh, they brought me in to manage the U.K. consortium contract. It's a 705 million Saudi Riyadh contract for five years, managing the whole maturity improvement of SAR using the capabilities of the UK consortium to, from year to year until we achieve some certain targets and KPIs by 2020. Basically, we start top down. We, we just have to understand exactly where do we want to go with our assets in terms of strategy and in terms of investments. And we may want to make sure that we can, get, uh, we can maximize the utilization and benefits of those assets from time to time. And recently, when the board were, were constituted um, in, in, in early 2000, in uh, late 2016, the decision was in uh, how we could cascade all these strategic corporate uh, KPIs into understanding how the assets are, are moving to, uh, forward. We are adopting many models, like the UK models, Network Rail, they are helping us in, in, in providing those models. And of course, the, the, the ISO 55000 series and PASS 55 standards on how we make sure that our assets are always safeguarded and always uh, been utilized efficiently and effectively. And there's some worldwide KPIs useful for asset management. We always make a, the right balance between tools, people and processes and standards. So with, when, we, when, when we talk about tools, recently we've signed a contract with the IBM Maximo to make sure that all these assets have been registered very well and been monitored very well. So we adopted four uh, pillars in the processes from planning, it's, it's from a, a acquisition of the assets to the disposal of the assets. So it's planning, reviewing, and uh, make sure uh, improving, and then at the end we, uh, we may dispose or reinstate the, those assets. So uh, when you talk, talk about people, in the same contract that I'm managing, there is a, a, an opportunity for training and knowledge transfer where our people will be ready and be able to manage those assets uh, effectively and monitor them very well. So these are the three pillars and these are the three corners of the maturity and capability of assets. And this is how we develop our KPIs for monitoring assets. In 2016, there was a, a, a turnaround decision that was made by the Saudi government when they said, that Saad is going to be the owner of every infrastructure between the cities. That's a big, big decision because that has turned Saad into a north-south rail company operator, uh, operator and infrastructure manager to a whole new portfolios of assets that need to be managed carefully and effectively. So north-south rail is 2,750 kilometers long started from Riyadh up to Krayat, to the North Jordan border, uh, crossing six passenger stations, six wonderful state-of-the-art passenger stations. You, you, you should be there. It's, it's really incredible infrastructure. And from um, uh, around five or 600, around 600 something kilometer along that line, there's a branch line that goes to Jubail, where we support heavily the value chain of the mineral industry in Saudi Arabia. So companies, our customers, our, our customers which we really admire so much, Ma'adin and, and other customers, we really contribute to their value chain very much. We're transporting their minerals, phosphate, bauxite, molten sulfur, uh, phosphoric acids, and so on. Uh, so on. We, we're going to transform many things. So we're talking about 2,750 kilometers of tracks. We're talking about ha Haramein High Speed Rail, which is in between Mecca and Medina and Jeddah. This is around 450 kilometers. We're talking about the Mambria Rail, which is around 650 kilometers. We're talking about the new, uh, the new rail, which is going to be developed. It's just called Saudi Land Bridge from the uh, western uh, port to the eastern port. And we have the GCC, of course, to connect ourselves together to make sure that we have a very good logistic uh, co collaboration. Now, here is the key. The key to all this is the Vision 2030 of the custodian of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We're really, really happy that we are having a vision that drives us forward to make sure that all this could be achieved with our effort and with our, our uh, allies and our, our people who's working with us. And this, by doing, by, 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 by safeguarding and managing all these assets carefully, uh, one of our main pillar of Saudi, pillars of Saudi Arabia is that, that uh, Prince, his, his Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman said, is that he want to make Saudi Arabia a global logistic hub. 
global logistic hub means that everyone has to work uh, side by side, integrated from one point to another, make sure that we are all one network. And by saying all, I'm saying that Saudi Arabia and the GCC. It's uh, railway, it's, it's, uh, it's a high cost industry. So everyone is looking for something or someone or some idea to minimize the cost and maximize the returns. So if we work together as GCC countries, I believe that strategically we could, we could achieve something that would really uh, minimize the, the dependencies on, the, on our governments to make sure that we achieve our goals with efficient uh, uh, performance, with efficient effort, without being more li uh, liable on the government to spend more money. So we want to add more to the government by minimizing our deficits and we want to make sure that we are really delivering the right value added services to our customers, to our small uh, SMEs, small and medium enterprises, because really this is what all matter. We need to make sure those small and medium enterprises are really raised up and they're doing their business work. Three things. The first thing is just to make sure that we are more reliable and more safe than the mode of transport that they are using. This is the first thing. The second thing, and affordable, by the way, and affordable. The second thing is that they need to consider Vision 2030 again. We want to minimize dependence on the fuel consumption. Our fuel consumption rate are high, so we need to make sure that these assets for our countries are really reserved for, for our children and, and uh, our grandchildren to make sure that our prosperity remains. So the only way to do that is to make sure that everyone is really adopting the Vision 2030. The third thing, which is very, very important, is that the, 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 the connection between cities and, and villages. Sometimes, sometimes when you use your car or use your vehicle to transport from one point to another, you feel the burden of having a ticket, of a speed ticket, or you're having a problem in gas stations, or you have a problem uh, giving your children something to eat while you're driving, or some, some work, or you want to do something. Come on, railway, those couches, those cars give you the luxury that you want, giving you all the, uh, all the services, all the food, canteens, things that could, uh, all the play places for your children, and they would have an experience that they had, uh, they, they could have the same in Europe and, and other countries. So uh, having uh, to experience that, I think the, the people need to understand the service and come on to the train and try it. Middle East Trail is basically, and the, 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 the title speaks about itself. When you talk about Middle East, we, talk, we are part of the Middle East. I'm a huge part, a strategic part of the Middle East. We're talking about the biggest geographical country in this region, and it's, it has huge investment in infrastructure and logistics. So uh, being in the Middle East is very, very important for Saudi Arabia to show the progress that we've made so far from a year to a year and encourage other partners like any other companies and any other uh, state-owned companies or government entities to move and follow our, our footsteps in moving forward and achieving the same results we're achieving. We are happy to exchange and share our knowledge to other, with others. We are happy to show our experience. For example, we haven't launched the passenger service last year. We had launched the, the passenger service this year, and I'm proud to say we had launched it in February 26. And for God's sake, we've launched it successfully. We, had a, we were targeting 80% customer satisfaction as a target rate. We achieved 94. We, uh, that, that's, that's a very good thing. And, and, and riderships were, uh, were targeted about 60%. We achieved 93. We're talking about numbers and we're talking about services. At this, there is an army of people working in South to make sure that these, these things are happening. And again, driven by the Vision 2030.